Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This video is my 100th video, so I decided to take a slight detour and talk about a topic that most of you would find interesting no matter what you practice, whether one of more of the internal martial art or qigong or meditation, and that is Dan Tian. Most of us have heard the term Dan Tian at some point. Quite likely in martial art training, Kung Fu movie or literature. However, Dan Tian was a concept still remains a mystery to most people in the community. I strongly believe that understanding this concept will not only improve our practice but also enrich our philosophical and cultural knowledge. This video will cover the following topics. First, importance of Taoism in Chinese culture. Second, what is Dantian? Third, where is Dantian? Four, Dantian in martial art training. Five, demonstration. And topic six, takeaways. Topic 1. Importance of Dantian in Chinese culture. Any talk of, about Taoism is incomplete without mentioning the name Lao Tzu, often also romanized as Lao Tzu. So who was Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu was the founder of Taoism and one of the most important figures in Chinese history. Taoism is one of the two great indigenous philosophical traditions of China, the other being Confucianism. According to Shi Ji, or record of the historian, written by Sima Qian from 145 to 86 BCE, Lao Tzu was a native of Chu, a southern state in the Zhou dynasty. His surname was Li, his given name was Er. Also, he was called Dan. In Mandarin, Lao means old, Zi means master. So, Lao Zi means old master in English. He was alive around 500 BC. We all know the book named Tao Te Ching, or the Book of the Tao. Lao Tzu was the author of this book. Since the time of original publication, there have been more than a thousand books interpreting and commenting on Tao Te Ching. Personally, I love this book a lot. This is the only book in China that specifically talk about Tao Te Ching in the context of Taoist meditation. The name of the book is Tao Te Ching Chan Wei in Mandarin, or Explanation of the Subtlety of Tao Te Ching in English, published about 300 years ago. In record of the historian book, Sima Qian said that Lao Tzu cultivated the Tao and the virtue, which means that Lao Tzu was the person who promoted the concept of Tao and virtue. First point, Dao Jia, or philosophical Taoism, versus Dao Jiao, religious Taoism. Now, let's briefly talk about the type of the Taoism. Today, Taoism is mainly of two types. They are philosophical Taoism and religious Taoism. Taoism, as originally created and practiced by Lao Tzu, was not a religion at all. It was a philosophical system. Taoism, as a native religion of China, came much later than Lao Tzu. Religious Taoism was created around 130 to 140 AD by 
Zhang Dao Ling. Before that, there were some sects based on Daoism, but Zhang Dao Ling developed and unified prior Daoism sects into a major religion. And as a religion, Daoism still exists in China. Today, there are about 9,000 Daoist temples and about 50,000 religious Daoists, including both males and females in China. In the interest of time, I won't go into any details of philosophical and religious Daoism today. I may take more video, make more videos on them in the future. But surf, surface is to say that there is the difference between philosophical and religious Taoism. Second point, Taoism and Chinese culture. For the purpose of today's video, I'd like to focus on the term culture instead of civilization. To put it simply, Taoism has had the broadest and the most profound influence on Chinese culture, including language, belief system, tradition, art, aesthetics, ethics, and society. As a Chinese, I see that we use Taoist terms on a daily basis since it is much more prevalent than any other belief system in China. For example, the term Qi is the Taoist term. I will talk about the term Qi in future, but for today, suffice is to say that Qi means vital energy or life force. In Chinese culture, anything intangible or abstract can be described as a certain type of Qi because it is part of the metaphysics of a Chinese philosophy. When someone is angry, people call it sheng qi or rising energy. When someone is sick, people believe there is the bing qi or pathogenic energy in the body. Therefore, to be healthy, one has to preserve and cultivate the qi or energy. To cultivate the qi through practice, Taoist practitioners follow a popular approach, which is commonly known as a way to refine the jing or convert essence into qi, convert the qi into shen or spirit, and elevate the spirit into xu or emptiness. In Taoism, we call them the three treasures. A famous Taoist saying is that in the sky, there are the sun, the moon, the stars, and in the body there are jing, qi, and shen. We will talk about it more in the next topic. Second topic, what is Dantian? First point, started from meditation. The concept of Dantian was first introduced in Taoist meditation. Over thousands of years, many methods have been developed to cultivate the qi, including but not limited to visualization, external elixir or wai dan, internal elixir or Taoist meditation, qi gong, stretching, Chinese medicine, and of course martial art. Let's talk about external elixir first. In external elixir practice, the objective was to live longer, which was a popular practice about 2000 years ago. Taoist priest focused on refining minerals, metals, and other natural substances. To get the so-called external elixir, Taoist priest used the stove and the burner, or lu ding, to mix and refine metals, minerals, and other natural substances. Yun Ji Qi Jian, or seven categories of classics, 
is a collection of all the most important Taoist documents in history, including external elixirs, published about a thousand years ago. There are many images about the, the structure of stove and the burners. See this part a lot. Unfortunately, due to insufficient knowledge of the impact on those substances on the body, many people who consumed white then got poisoned. Although the practice of external elixir was not as successful as they expected. It was the early stage of a Chinese scientific and technological approach in the development of a Chinese civilization. Some Chinese inventions, such as gunpowder, campus, were direct side products during the process. At the same time, things gradually changed. Although it began before the practice of an external elixir. Internal elixir or nei dan became popular and hence developed more starting from about 2000 years ago. Especially after realizing that the external elixir practice could do more harm than good, Tao's practitioners switched to internal practice. The main method in internal elixir is Taoist meditation, which has been well developed and extremely popular for more than a thousand years. Interestingly, in order to describe the internal practice, Taoist priest and a scholar borrowed the terminology of external elixir practice. For example, the element mercury is used to describe the mind because it is not stable. The element's light is used to describe the jing or essence because it is easy to think. Stove and the burner have their specific physical place in our body, and so on. By doing so, they could not only document their practice, but also keep it a secret, since without specific training, there was no way to understand the written documents or training manuals. So, what is Dan Tian? Dan means elixir, Tian means field. Therefore, Dan Tian means the elixir field, or the area that stores energy. One of the earliest written records of Dan Tian is the Lao Zi inscription, an article carved on a huge stone dating back to the Han Dynasty or about 1850 years ago, to praise the contribution of Lao Zi. In the article carved on the stone, it describes the specific visualization and meditation method. One part of it specifically focused on Dan Tian. There are other documents including Bao Pu Zi Di Zhen or Keeping Stability in English, dating back to the same period which describes different type of Dan Tian and provide a more detailed explanation on practice methods. As an aside, in ancient China, people would carve important documents on the stone tablets, expecting it to last thousands of years. To summarize, Dan Tian is the term used to describe the process of internal practice with the earliest written document dating back to more than 1,800 years ago. Second, adaption in Qigong. 
Later on, with the rapid development of Chinese medicine for the last 2,000 years, Qigong became very popular as a health practice due to its nature. Easy to practice, easy to master, and easy to promote. As the health maintenance method, Qigong practice can be found in most of the ancient Chinese medicine books. I can confidently say that the popularity of Qigong has been mostly due to the TCM or traditional Chinese medicine. Third point, application in martial arts. Dan Tian came to be used much later in martial art practice, about 300 years ago. One of the earliest internal martial art theory documents is the famous Jiu Yao Lun, or Nine Importance Theory. This is the document transferred by Ji Ji Ke, the commonly agreed founder of Xin Yi without the G, which is the part of, or the, which is the parent art of Xing Yi with a G. Since this document didn't clearly explain the theory, martial artists use the word Dan Tian to describe martial art practice. This document can be considered as the earliest Xing Yi theory document, and it was later adapted and used in Tai Chi theory as well. The name of the Tai Chi document adapted from Xin Yi is Tai Chi Quan Shi Da Yao Lun in Mandarin, or 10 Important Principles of Tai Chi. Third topic, where is Dan Tian? We have been talking about Dan Tian for a while, but then now you may want to ask, where is Dan Tian? Some of you may say Dan Tian is a place below the navel. Well, to sufficiently answer this question, we have to explain the term a bit more. We already introduced Dan Tian as place where qi gets refined. Its process and its result is in loading or stove and the burner. There are different definitions and meanings for the term Dan Tian. Now, let me introduce some of them. First one, most popularly, Dan Tian is defined as the area of the few inches below the navel. Traditional Chinese medicine normally uses this definition as well. Second, the area inside the body but, the, but below the navel is the stove, and the area above the navel is the burner. We call this xiao lu ding, or small stove and the burner. The first step of practice in most Taoist meditation is to stabilize the stove and the burner in order to refine the jing or essence. In this context, the dantian is at the navel area. 3. The whole stomach area is the stove, and the head is the burner. At this moment, the inside of the chest is the middle dantian, and the inside of the head is the upper dantian. Fourth, the whole body is the stove, and the exterior area of the whole universe is the burner. In this context, at this moment, the whole body is dantian. Five, the whole substantial area of the universe is the stove and the insubstantial area of the universe is the burner, and the, the merging area of the universe is Dantian. Universe means empty space out of our body in Taoism. This concept is very abstract. You need to have years of meditation practice and study 
the specific branches of Tao's meditation in order to fully understand it. I will explain this topic in more detail in the future. These terms and the descriptions are used in Tao's meditation practice. I would like to show you a book. The name of the book is Xing Ming Gui Zhi. This book, this document is at least 500 years old. In this book, at least more than 100 different names have been used to mean the same term Dantian. In Qigong practice, we focus mostly on the lower, middle, and the upper Dantian. Since Qigong can be considered as the dynamic or simplified meditation, the term Dantian used in Qigong has been also been simplified. However, the Dantian concept in internal martial art is different. Simply speaking, in internal martial art practice, Dantian is the area that generates the force used in self-defense. Generally speaking, it is the whole physical area between the hip and the waist. It is much more tangible and practical than the same term used in meditation and qigong. To help you understand it better, later I will explain it based on each of the three internal styles of martial art. To summarize, the function and the location of Dantian differs depending on what you practice. It can either be an abstract region for refining qi or storing qi, or a well-defined region to generate the force for self-defense. Topic 4. Dantian in martial art training. Owning to its Taoist roots, I will limit the scope of a discussion of the Dantian concept only to the three internal martial art styles. Of course, some Shaolin school use the same name, just like they use the Yin Yang logo as well. But that's more of the cultural phenomenon that terms and the symbols can be borrowed due to its symbolic meaning. In Xing Yi, the triangle made by the hips and the lower back or Mingmen area is the Dantian in Xing Yi practice. Practitioners should focus on the lower back and hips, but very often they do not. When working on Fa Jin or force releasing exercise, one should try to initiate the movement from this area and then transfer to the shoulder, the arm, the and hand in that order. That is the key to generating Xing Yi power. In Tai Chi, based on decades of practice, I firmly believe the Dantian to be the area between the waist and the premium Hui Yin in Mandarin. Many seniors in Tai Chi community including my own teachers, agree with this definition. Tai Chi force is often called Yao Gang Jin, or waste and premium force. Wang Zongyue, author of the Tai Chi 13 poster poem, said that the source of life and the mind is in the area of the waste. Here, in ancient Chinese, the term life and the mind means skill and practice. By the way, Wang Zongyue was a contemporary of Chen Wangting, the founder of Chen style Tai Chi. Many people even speculate that Wang Zongyue was the real founder of Tai Chi. In Bagua, the Dantian is the area between waist and hips. When practicing Bagua, 
people pay attention to this area. Also, flexibility in, in this area is critical to Bagua practice. There is a common mistake in Bagua practice that people cannot differentiate the hips and the waist. The mistake is called Yao Kua Bu Fen in Mandarin or not being able to differentiate waist and hips in English. Yes, they are physically close, but they play different functions in Bagua practice. I will introduce this topic in future so that you will fully understand it. Also worth noting, we often hear the, hear the term synced energy to Dan Tian or Qi Chen Dan Tian in Mandarin. So what does it mean? Does it mean that we have to breathe, breathe from the Dan Tian area in martial art practice? The answer is no. There's no way to breathe from the Dan Tian area in martial art. Breathing from the Dan Tian area is the practice and the term used in Qigong and the meditation, not martial art. A lot of such misconception occur when people try to apply terms from one practice to another without fully understanding the differences between them. So the Chinese term Chen or Sink in English in martial art training can mean one of to stabilize, to focus, to initiate, to mobilize, depending on the movement. These meanings should be applied specifically according to each movement. Topic 5. Demonstration. Today, I'd like to share an exercise from Xing Yi with you. The objective of that exercise is to strengthen the lower abdominal area so that you will be forced to practice the reverse breathing method. Reverse breathing method is useful to practice Fa Jin or force releasing in any internal styles of martial arts. You can add this exercise to your daily practice so that with time your force will be more powerful. This is the exercise. Okay, you can you can keep your your left foot forward, then right foot backward. Then use this area, right? Use this area to hit your stomach. At the same time, at the same time, exhale and tense the lower stomach. So like, so exhale when you strike on your stomach by yourself with this area. Then so extend outward. Then. Let me show you again with the distance. Then change it to the other side. So something important is that keep your head extend upward. Second, do not make the fist very tight. Just loosen the fist or keep empty fist. Inside have space. And then use this area to hit here or this area beside your navel and the exhale same time. The tip of the tongue push on the upper palate, close the mouth, breathe with your nose. Then let me show you again. Oh. You can practice this movement as many as you want, but at least each time I say practice 20 or 30 times each time. You can practice this one slowly, but at least 20 to 30 times each time. Then after practice, then relax, focus on the lower dantian area. Topic 6. Takeaways. First, Dan Tian is a classical term that originated in Taoism and has been adapted by various practices. 
From now on, we should be carefully to consider the correct meaning of the term in the context of the specific practice. Second, while practicing any internal martial art, please pay special attention to the Dantian area as defined in context of that art. Your main objective should be to focus on using the Dantian region to generate power not a specific point or small area used in TCM or traditional Chinese medicine. 3. Also, I hope you will practice the exercise I just introduced in this video. Though I mentioned it as a Xing Yi exercise, it will also be beneficial to Tai Chi and the Bagua practitioners. Thank you for watching. See you next time and Enjoy your practice.